Hello, here I am with my art journal. These are the last two pages that I did in my last video. If you haven't seen it, uh, I'll link down below. But here is the page I'm working on now. I've already gessoed it. I've just put on some pink, some lovely magenta, and now I'm coming in with some purple. I'm sort of blending it in with the magenta that was there already. At the moment, I'm just creating a bit of a background. Putting some more up above as well. Now, the aim of this painting is to think of a summer garden, and this is a wish for next year. I'd like more flowers in my garden all summer long. I seem to have patches of them and then they've all gone. Now I'm adding a little bit of white with some pink in it down to the bottom. I'm using just acrylic paints, system still around is system threes. They're my favourites, I use them all the time. I do use some other acrylics, but these are very economical. Right, now I've done a couple of layers and now I'm going in again with a bit more of a glaze. This is some magenta with a bit of white, but also some matte medium, which is the white puddle you can see to the right of me there. And I'm going to do some stenciling. What I'm aiming for at the moment is to build up some interesting texture background before I start working on the the floral feeling I'm going to go for. I can't believe it's autumn already. The trees haven't really changed colour much. There's a bit of change, but not an awful lot just yet. I don't know why that is. It seems quite late in the season. I hope we don't get strong winds that blow the leaves off before they have that lovely colour. That happens some years. And I'm just putting some green on down below. That's to um, replicate foliage. Bits of foliage peeping through. So yes, I'd like to have some beautiful flowers, even if they're just annuals. I would like quite a few in the garden this year. I've got some uh, nice wildflower seeds to put down as well, which are to encourage the bees. And now I've got some light pink up at the top. Yes, it's nice to encourage the bees and butterflies into the garden. They're very useful things to have. All the insects are. I'm just dabbing the whites all over. Lifting the colours a little bit and creating some interesting shapes. Now I've come in with my little stencil. This is the one I call Roses, but I can't sell it in my shop because it is my interpretation of one of Tim Holtz's stencils. I don't feel I can sell it. Um, he has one for sale and his is called Scribbles, I do believe. But I've really gone for the Roses shape in mine. Sort of Art Deco Roses. And I just want to create some of these floral textures. And I'm going in with some more of the purpley red glaze. So some of the colours are still showing through underneath. That creates a bit of variety. Doing some more of the green. The initial layer of green I put down was fairly transparent and this is a little bit more opaque. And I'm doing some stenciling. This is one of my, uh, I do sell these in my shop. These are my sets of mark making stencils. I love them. They're all the marks that I normally make in my art journals and even on paintings. And I've turned them into little stencil sets. And this is my favorite, the one with the stripes. I absolutely love it. And this is to replicate stems or grasses. In fact, I'm having to go over it twice. So I'm going to dry it while it's in situ. And then I'm going to put some more paint through. And I'm using purple, which is why the purple is very transparent, which is why I had to do it twice. I 
Um, it is just representative of stalks or grasses in the garden, as I say. This is fairly abstract. Love it. Give it a quick dry, so I normally cut that out. Let's do a little bit more of this stencil. Let's join those two areas together a bit more. Go over the join. And this is a bit of the purple with some white mixed in. Um, and it's very subtle, but that's good. That's kind of what I wanted. Yeah, so you can barely see it, but it is there. Let's do a bit up the top there as well. Just to extend that floral area. Some of my favourite plants in a garden are things like hollyhocks and delphiniums. I want some more of plants like that. I've got some aquilegias, I love those. I'd like some more of those as well. I've got a little honeysuckle plant that my sister gave me that needs to be nurtured a little bit. It's uh, looking a bit sickly. But yes, traditional plants like that and maybe some um, rambling roses, things like that I want in that garden. I have more plans than I have time really, but there we go. Of course, it's been quite difficult over these past couple of years where I've not been able to go to the garden centre and pick out some new plants. So I've had to make do with what I can, what I have, which isn't a lot. I'm going in with some more green now, getting lighter and lighter. Oh, and lupins, I love lupins in the garden, although they normally get attacked by a green fly. And now going in with some darker red down in the bottom, just to ground the painting a little bit. And to indicate the underneath of plants or leaves. So as you can see, it is very abstract. And as usual with an abstract, I'm working fairly intuitively, not thinking too hard about what I'm doing. And I'm, I'm working from my imagination. I'm not um, referencing anything in particular. And now just to add some sky peeping through at the top. And I'm using my word stencil. This is this is also for sale in my Etsy shop. I love this stencil. I used it a lot in my Halloween pages, but I love it on everything. Just going through now. What colour is that? I think that's the magenta and the purple mixed actually. There, that's lovely. That ties all those colours together as well and gives some interest up in that area, which was rather quiet. Just doing a little bit of it down here. I difficulty deciding what colour to put up the top, but I went for... Mostly magenta. And now what I've done is I've missed out the bit on the right hand side. I forgot to turn the camera on, but I've got these leaf cutouts, which um, I cut out using my silhouette, but um, they're not very good. So I decided to use them as masks. So I place them and then I go over them with a 
a makeup sponge with some light pink over the top. And that really does suggest foliage in the garden, doesn't it? Lovely, lovely shapes in those leaves. I do love them and I really wish the cutouts had worked, but they didn't really. As we'd, I did have them in the shop for a while, but I couldn't get them to cut accurately every time, so I withdrew them. Yeah, it's a lot of lovely texture there now. And now I'm coming in with my Mondrian style leaf stencil. And with dark blue, I'm going through that. Takes a bit of time. In fact, I think I have to go over twice to get it to be a deep enough colour. As you can see, I've sped this up a little bit. Yeah, so while it's in place, I'm going to give it a blast with the hairdryer. Then I can go over a second time to make it a bit more opaque because it's a little bit too transparent at this stage. Here we go, going over it again. And this time I've achieved the darkness I wanted. Uh, the colour I've used, I think, is um, primary blue with perhaps a tad, just a tiny bit, of Payne's Grey added to darken it a bit. There, lovely. And now on the right hand side, I'm going to go in with the leaf shapes. Now I've used similar colours. There's a little bit of green in it, which you can't see it very well on video. So it is slightly different. And I have the same problem, but it's too transparent. So I need to do the same thing again, dry it with a hairdryer and come in again with the second layer. That's much, much darker. Right, and now what I'm doing is with a Posca pen, I'm going around the edges of those leaves just to accentuate them and make them stand out from the background a lot more. I do that on both leaf shapes. And in fact, a couple of days later, I had to go over and do it again because um, the white of the Posca pen had begun to disappear and soak up some of the other colours. So I had to go over it again later. So this is a very summery, pretty garden page. Abstract garden page, I'd describe it as. So this is me halfway through the um, signature in this book. In fact, it is now the only signature in this book because I took the other one out because this has chunked up quite a bit. And as I say, this is part two. I haven't finished the book, so I'm going to have to do a part three. I've done some pages. I've recorded some pages. But this video would be miles too long if I did those as well. Um, I would like to get this book finished as much as possible. And I am enjoying working on the garden theme. Oh, I can take this moment to say thank you very much, everybody who subscribes to my channel and hits the like button and all the lovely comments I get. Absolutely love those. Thank you very much for that. I really appreciate it. And welcome to the new subscribers. I seem to have had a few more lately, which is lovely. Um, I must let you know that I also have a Patreon account. Look at that page, isn't that gorgeous? I'm so pleased with it. Uh, I have a Patreon account, the link is down below. If you'd like to join me there, I'd really appreciate it. It helps support this channel. I also have an Etsy shop, so a lot of the stencils you see me use are designed by me and are available in my Etsy shop. Uh, the link also is down below. 
so I could take away the tatty papers from behind. We'll take off that bit of masking tape I was using to protect that tab. I might add something else to the front of it now, so it's not just plain white. But that's how it looks finished. I love it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.